So thank you so much, because I thank you for agreeing to do this. We really, I really do appreciate you. Thank, and I know you had something this morning before coming on. So you had a busy day already. It's never too busy when we talk about things God's doing in our lives. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Have you got anything else lined up after, after this? Yes, I've got a massage booked. Oh, gosh, yeah. It's rejuvenating for me. <laughs> I can imagine you're looking forward to that. So that's yeah. great. Great. Nice to have you here with us. So my hands up family, can you please show her some love? Let her know that she's appreciated. Some hugs. I'm hugging you from right over here. Sending you loads of love and hugs. And thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> yes, we want to see the love and the hugs. Come on, guys. Let's let her feel welcomed. Yes, that's it. Yes, that's it. <laughs> right. Okay. So today, before I actually introduce you, um, we're going to be talking about living whilst waiting. And um, a few hours ago, someone sent me a message and said, oh, the message is not clear. What, what are you waiting for? So I thought, mm -hmm. I said to her, we're going to be talking about, you know, as a single person whilst you're waiting for yourself. But the truth is that in life, we are always waiting for one thing or the other. Whether mm -hmm. it's waiting to get married, waiting to get pregnant, waiting for a job, waiting for your... We're always waiting. So today's topic is, gonna, even though it might not apply to you directly as a single person, but it's going to apply to you if you, if you open up your mind. So it's, it's mm -hmm. a topic that every, any, everyone can take away from. Right, so... Our guest for today is Lady Gozan. Oh, <laughs> she's a lady. Um, and um, she used to be a mental health lawyer. For, I think you were a mentor for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now you are a youth mentor. That's what you do. Um, but there's much more. So I'm going to leave you to just tell us a little bit more about yourself. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, so um, I was raised culturally Muslim, gave my life to Christ in my early 20s because wow. I needed hope and the invitation was there. Jesus pursued me. Um, so I'm a youth mentor, I believe, positioned by the Lord to be there. I tutor and I'm also a relationship coach. So I love, love, love relationships and that's relationships with ourselves relationships with God, relationships with family members, friendships, as well as romantic partners, mates. Um, I also have a coaching program called Wife in the Waiting Academy, which is basically teaching women who desire to be married to wait well, wait in purpose, and wait trusting God for his best. Wow, thank you so much for that. You've got a lot. <laughs> You're doing yeah. a lot. But... Um... You said something at the beginning. You you were Muslim mm -hmm. before you gave your life. How old were you when you eventually gave your life? Twenty two. Wow. How did your parents take that? It's interesting because we were culturally Muslim, which meant we, you know, would call ourselves Muslim but would only go to a mosque for a funeral. Um, we oh. celebrated the festivities but didn't do the praying five times a day. There was bacon cooked in our house yeah. alcohol in the house so cultural aspect because we came from a north cyprus which is a muslim country okay. um so yeah my mum actually was the one that invited me to church which is interesting a bit, right? <laughs> right so i remember they first invited me and i was like mm, i don't need that i don't, you guys need jesus i don't i'm positive i'm good so I had reject, like basically declined their invitation to go church first. And then eventually I um, got into a space where I needed some power greater than myself when getting my life to Christ. But there was quite a bit of resistance from my father because unlike the other Christians in the family or those who went church. So was your mum a Christian before you? She was. All but right, okay. I'm the one that publicly started speaking about Jesus more. Okay. Because okay. I was an advocate. I'm going to advocate for things that are working for me. 
Right. So that's where some of the resistance did come. And there was a bit of kind of like, what do you mean you're Christian? Like, kind of like back, <laughs> backlash from them. But with God's grace, we are where we are today. And they know that the phase isn't, you know, it's not a phase. It's, it's a not way a phase. It's not going to go away. Right. 12 years in, we're good. <laughs> Thank God. Fantastic. Right. Okay. So today we're talking about living whilst waiting. Mm -hmm. And you're someone who is living whilst waiting. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit more about that from your experience, from your personal experience? And remember I said to you, please be as vulnerable as you uh, want okay. to be, as you can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one thing I'm waiting on God for, so like when we speak of waiting, it's waiting on the promises of God. Yeah. There's over 8,000 promises of God in the Bible. So whether it's waiting for provision, waiting for a mate, waiting for your breakthrough in work, whatever it is, waiting for a family. Yeah. We're all waiting on God for something. So I like that you shared that. So I'm currently waiting on the Lord for my mate. I desire to be married. Um, and this is actually what instigated the birth of wife in the, wife in the Waiting Academy. It's he who finds a wife finds a good thing and receives favor from the Lord. So my mind was like, so he who finds a wife, not a woman. So I need to be a wife before. And therefore I need to position myself in the way as a wife. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? And it's like that journey with God that I'm in currently. I'm, I'm not engaged, I'm not married at the moment, and I'm just waiting on God to help me be the best authentic version of myself, okay. help me walk in my purpose, to then help me align with the right mate for me. So yeah. how are you waiting purposefully? How are you waiting? So I touched on it a little bit there. It's For me, I'm waiting intentionally. I'm waiting doing things that, I know God has put in my heart to do. Okay. So I'm waiting while serving other people as a youth mentor. I'm pouring into children's lives. I desire my own children one day. Yes, you but in the interim, I'm pouring out into the youth. And we're, we're behavior specialists. So we're helping children manage their emotions. We're helping children respond in better ways at school. So I'm helping in service to God and, you know, being a friend, being a mentor to these young people. Um, I'm waiting in purpose. I'm an encourager. That's what I do daily. I encourage other people. I'm waiting, building the relationships I currently have, my friendships, my family relationships. Okay. So... That that's what waiting in purpose looks like for me. And yeah, it's it's fun when you're doing that because my focus isn't on oh, I need a husband. That's not for me. It's eyes are on God, I'm in purpose, and everything else is gonna work out as God wants it. But you know, because then someone would say, Yes, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> you know, I'm waiting on purpose, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But then some a single person would think, but they you know, sometimes I'm lonely. Sometimes mm -hmm. I feel, will I ever get married? So speak mm -hmm. from your own experience because I know that if you don't mind, I, I, you said you didn't mind anyway. Mm -hmm. You've been engaged a few times. Yeah. So just share, you know, the practical things that you've been through and you've still mm -hmm. held on to God, believing that you will, um, your husband will find you one day. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had a few engagements. Um, so in our culture, we have this thing where we do courtship, um, where, you know, you might go on a date with someone, but then if you're dating for marriage, they have to come and, you know, ask your father for your his permission to date with marriage in mind. Okay. So that's happened twice. And then I've had an engagement once. And you know, you kind of think they're coming to my dad. This is like real. This is like serious. Like, yeah. I see them clearly as a potential to be my husband. Like, I see that. Okay. And then what happens is when a relationship ends, it's like the hope ends too. The dream that you created in your mind ends too. Mm. The companionship, you know, the friendship that you had with that person ends as well. Yeah. So I found when the most difficult stages in the waiting has been really dealing with the grief 
behind mm. the loss of that relationship. Because in all fairness, in my heart of hearts, of course, like one of one of the relationships I had when I'd actually given my life to Christ, he wasn't a Christian. Okay. I knew that we were unequally yoked. Like the thought came to mind because I was like, oh, well, when we have kids, I would like them to go to church. And they're like, actually, I'd like to go the, to uh, bring them to my religious house. And I'm like, you don't even go to that religious house. At least I'm <laughs> consistent and I go to church. Mm-hmm. And then I was just like, the confusion for those children. Like, I knew in my heart of hearts that just wasn't God's best for me. Mm-hmm. But just the grief and dealing with the grief, dealing with the loss in that way was really hard. And then... More recently, 2019, the relation, uh, my engagement came to an end. It was, it was like, okay, by this point, I'd learned that if this is ending, it means God has better for me. Right. And if this is ending before marriage, it means that there's something God knows that I don't know. Yes. And I started taking more solace in that. I started trusting God more in that. So yes, I've had relationships that have failed, but in that failure, I've had wisdom to trust God more. Mm. And to, you know, when this whole con- concept of the one, it's the one that actually makes it to the altar and you commit, I guess. So they clearly weren't the one if it's ending before marriage. Yeah. And I kind of feel as though God gave me a, you know, a saving grace by then, you know, had, had we got married and then had the challenges that had come it would have been so much harder. Yeah. So, you know, marriage is, I would say, the second most um, difficult, well, sef- second most serious decision you'll ever make after giving your life to Christ. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you're committing to someone, you're giving your life to, to someone to join with them and build something. So um, it's, it's been challenging. There have been really lonely times. I remember one lonely time I had, so because I'm an encourager you see online I'm constantly sharing from my experiences I remember just right getting my laptop out and just writing and I had to step outside of myself I felt so lonely at that time I stepped out of myself and literally started writing a post to encourage someone else and I was talking about you know how I was feeling so lonely you know you may feel so lonely too and all this stuff and then I thought there's an elderly person's home not that far from where I live okay and if I felt so lonely being a healthy single person living on purpose how how much more lonely do you think the person sitting in the elderly home whose husband has died who don't have family come and see them on a regular basis who have probably been through times of war who have probably you know not even in you know, need assistance and help to live, Mm -hmm. wonder how lonely they feel. That's so true. So So I can either sit and wallow in my, in (laughs) self-pity or I could just be like, you know what? Yes, I feel lonely. I'm going to acknowledge that. But what can I do with this emotion? What can I do with this feeling? Quite a lot of the times it's stepping outside of yourself and just going and being there for someone else. Yeah. Because oftentimes we're lonely because we isolate ourselves. Oftentimes you know, we're why, lonely. Why, sorry to interrupt, but why do we do that? You know, you're feeling lonely. You think you want company and go out there. But why is it that we isolate ourselves first? What's that the first thing that comes to, oh, I'm just, why? I, like, just as you asked that, I kind of thought because we feel sorry for ourselves and want other people to feel sorry for us. And we almost have this expectation that other people should be coming and inquiring of us. We have this expectation that other people should be doing more to make us feel some kind of way. And we're not taking personal responsibility for where we're at, the emotions we're going through. You know, th- there's a reason we're feeling that way. Um, more recently, I've been really diving into emotions and God and how... I think emotions are a gift from God and God has emotions too. Like Jesus wept. Yes. 
Yeah. He got angry. Yeah. These are emotions. So we need to embrace emotions and just really be like, God, what are you talking to me in this and through this? Mm. And, you know, not allow ourselves to throw those pity parties. Oh, look, I'm single. All my friends are getting married. Da, 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 da. I've got no one to take me out on a date. I've got this, you know, no one's looking at me. No one's doing this. Um, I could sit there and wallow in that or I could be the person that just checks in on a friend and being like hey got any plans this weekend let's go out <laughs> let's live life on purpose or i could be like hey you got a moment would really like to talk about something yeah. or if you really don't have anyone get a therapist get someone to talk to yeah. i'm all about therapy and just you know if there's a difficult season in your life process it the way you do and i'm a verbal processor so talk therapy actually really works <laughs> <laughs> great Great. Take personal responsibility. I love that. And embrace your emotions. I yeah. love that. I love that. Let, let me go back to something you said about how one of the um, guys you engaged to, you were on equally yoke, if I, want, if I can use that. Mm -hmm. But you still were in the relationship. I guess you were hoping that things would change. And I'm sure you know that for a lot of, well, let me not say a lot, but there's some single people who are in relationships that they know that the relationship is not going anywhere, but they're mm. still stuck in that because they're thinking, if I leave this relationship, I probably will find another one. Can mm. you speak into that, please? How do you get out of that kind of relationship? Well, if you're not leaving a relationship because you think you can't find another one, that's coming from a place of fear. Mm. And we know God doesn't operate in fear because no. he has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind so that tells me that that person has a bit of self self evaluation self reflection to do right. and invite god into that because if you're operating from fear then you're going to actually attract what you fear mm. if it's you're operating like, from fear you attract what you fear okay. yeah yeah. Um, because that's where your mind's going. That's what you're projecting. Our world is framed by the words we speak. Yes. Our world is framed, and then you know, our words come from our thoughts. So if we're thinking it, it's going to then what the world call manifest. But Jesus, like it's in the Bible, yeah. Scripture says it. Yeah. Out the abundance of a man's, you know, heart. Yes. Yeah. So we need to understand that where where is this coming from um i know in in the relationship that i had it was quite a long relationship but towards the end i just felt so convicted by god in certain choices i was making in that relationship okay. that i had to reestablish boundaries okay. and i was just like i know that i know that i know this is what god's telling me to set these boundaries okay. and i didn't even think of the consequences yeah. I didn't. I just set the boundaries and I think he just wasn't happy with them, which is fine because I don't think I'd have ended that relationship. I think I'm just a bit too loyal, too committed. I'm all in, ride, ride and live. I don't like ride and die, ride and live. But um, yeah, so once I set those boundaries because I was fully convicted by God to set those, right. everything else fell in line. I started putting God first. I was, you know, I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you. So if I'm genuinely seeking God first, I'm living as he's shown me to live in yeah. righteousness, one with him, then God's going to reward me. It's what his word says. So I need to trust it. So if I'm in a relationship that's unequally out, I'm not trusting God. No. And quite often I don't trust God because I don't know God. And I haven't taken that time to build my relationship with him to trust him. It's like, you know, you can trust a family member. Yes. Because you know them. Mm -hmm. You can trust that they're going to behave in a certain way, whether that's a positive or negative way. Yes. Because they're consistent in doing that. And you've spent that time. You know, I could, any one of my family members, if they were, like to come to me be like oh they're gonna say this or do this i'll know if that's true or not because i know that person yes but we don't spend that time with god we don't invest in our relationship with god mm -hmm. to then know if his promises are actually yes and amen mm -hmm. or to actually know if you know his promises are true and he's faithful mm -hmm. we don't 
you know, we don't consider God faithful because we don't know him. We don't give him an opportunity to step in into our lives. So a lack of trust in God is because we don't know him. Don't know him. So we need to learn to spend more time to get to know God. Yeah. And invite him into our situations. It's like, um, you know, if I don't give space for God in my relationships, he's, like I always say, God is the perfect gentleman. Yeah. He's not going to intrude. He is not going to step in if you don't first invite him in. He he literally wants, all right, God, I'm opening the door. Come in. Welcome. <laughs> you know, fix, reorganize, it's, uh, declutter, anything you want. Yeah. Because I know you're good and all good things come from you anyway. So I'm just yeah. going to have to trust that you can come into my relationship. You can come in. T- and we tend to do that when we first give our life to Christ. Like, it's slow. We mm-hmm. slowly invite him in. It's yeah. not always, all right, God, like, just have it all. And relationships tend to be the last one because we get the most fulfillment from those. So first step is, God, come into this relationship. Just mix it up, chop it up, do what you need to because I want to see you work. And then he'll work in small ways and that's how we build our trust. Wow. You know, as you were speaking, I just thought of that scripture that says, um, his thoughts towards us are thoughts of good, his plans, all his plans. And I guess if we know that, then... And again, I guess it boils back to um, what you just said about trust. Yeah. Trusting God. You trust that his thoughts, all yeah. his plans for you are good. And God himself wants you to get married. You know, he said it's not good It's good for man to be alone. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't he give you the best? Why would he just allow you to settle for um, anyone? And that That's goes right. for both male and female. <laughs> and he wants godly generations. Like God wants come from homes where god is at the center and the children like god wants to be here in earth and that's by us inviting him in and he 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 loves marriage the blueprint of god is marriage because the stronger the marriages are the stronger family units are the stronger society is the stronger communities are the stronger nations are if you look at countries that have really strong traditional ethical backgrounds, they tend to be some of the strongest, you know, um, like morally strong countries. And we see a lot come from them. Yes. yes. But it all stems from marriage. And God, God's an advocate for me. It's his blueprint. Yeah, I do. I just love that. Because you know, I think when we're having a conversation previously, I said something or you said something that, you, we can, people can get married to anyone. But what yep. you just said is God wants godly, a godly generation. Yep. So he's not going to allow you to just marry anyone. Mm. That is so important to note. God wants a godly yeah. generation. He loves his daughters and sons. Like he's not going to give he, one of his sons, so a man of God, to yeah. any woman. True. He's not going to give his daughter. It's like my dad. Like, yeah. he's going to get a bit protective. <laughs> you know, he's right. A father tends to get protective over their daughters and, you know, sons that wow. they're going to want to be part of their, this new build up, this new coming together. Yeah. And, but first of all, like, for me to want someone whose heart is for God, yeah. I'm going to have to have my heart for God too. And there's often this kind of like, yeah, well, he's not this, he's not that, he's not this, he's not that. And then the question is, well, are you this and that and all of the other? <laughs> and then we're constantly looking outwards to, you know, they have to be this, they have to earn this much, they have to be in this field or whatever. But we're sitting there twiddling our thumbs, God's going to bring me a mate, he's going to bring me a mate. And I think I said recently, um, unless he's the Amazon delivery guy, who <laughs> actually just leaves the po- package on the door they don't even stay around no. so chances are even less like we need to get out we need to meet new people yeah. Yeah. we have to interact we can't just kind of isolate ourselves be in this bubble of loneliness go to places that you haven't been before yeah. just meet people learn what you like work learn what you don't like learn to communicate <laughs> But 
a single women I'm speaking of because that's my area of um <laughs> my area uh you know we don't do that and many men don't too they're like oh I'm shy how are you gonna meet someone if you're just so shy you have to kind of learn to deal with that in your singleness first no yeah yeah well I think I think do we is it um, a perceived thing where people think that especially single people if I go up, people can tell that I'm single. You know, it's like you're wearing a label. I'm single, so I don't want to go anywhere because people are going to feel sorry for me. So I just want to stay at home. And is that something that you've experienced before? Um, so I believe what they're speaking of is when I go out, I'm not going to be open enough to make more interactions, to meet new people. Um, if someone like going out and people know that I'm single means that I'm not open. Okay. Okay. So a person that's genuinely open will go out and make interactions. They will have conversations. They will, you know, and I think it's the core, like, you know, there's people that just don't know how to continue a conversation. Sure. Yeah. You have to learn how to continue a conversation. Sorry, single people, like, please practice. <laughs> learn to, like what we're doing, it's a conversation. You're picking up on words I'm saying, I'm picking up on words you're saying, we're continuing yeah. a conversation. Yeah. Single people, please learn this, please. It's called the art of conversation. So learn how to <laughs> make conversation. And I'm, like, when I go out, people, I don't think people look around, she's definitely single. Yeah. It doesn't, so I was reading a book. And this single person and a married person went out to an art gallery. Okay. And all, ev all of the guys were approaching the married person. And what she then turned around and said to her single... So, and then what the counsellor, I think, that I was, who wrote the book, turned around and said, it's because the married person was open to conversations. Right. She was open. People see is that openness. And that openness is attractive. It attracts people to com converse yeah. and to, yeah. you know, have conversations with. Whereas if I'm sitting there like this, just in the corner, who's going to come up and say Nobody's anything? Nobody's going to want to come up to you, no. Because no. I'm just like, very self-conscious, very kind of like insecure with myself, not comfortable. Like, and I'm just sitting in a chair. Whereas, you know, I'm just me. <laughs> and whatever you is, maybe you are not as bubbly or as talkative as I am. And that's okay. Just be you. I just have a smile on your face when you're out. It's that simple. Yes. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> because I have a smile. You can be, I, I'm someone like me, I'm reserved. Um, mm. So I might not necessarily be bubbly like you. But I just mm. have a smile. When someone's walking towards you, smile. You know, and not just look away and like, oh, please don't come near me. <laughs> right? Because if that's what you're thinking, they're not going to come near you. Yeah. yeah. Or you're going to attract the wrong people to you and that's just going to annoy you even more. <laughs> oh, God. Sound advice. Singles, please take that on board. Smile. Smile. Is that simple? <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, let's go, go back to this. It's amazing. The when we're talking, you said fifty percent of the population are actually single. Yes. Wow. And that's single who are divorced, uh, never married, widowed. <laughs> that's a lot. Generation has changed. So I'm currently doing a counselling course, and they were like, "Oh, let's do a project," and I'm like, "I'm doing it on singleness because that's my area." And I love reading on it. And I was so surprised to find, this is UK statistics, 2018, 50% of the population single. And that's because people are getting divorced. People are delaying marriage to a later stage. They're focusing on their careers or other things. Um, they are, yeah, some are just uh, waiting for their mate and are happily single in that season because the right person they have found to to join their life with um but it was also shocking that the age of marriage is also a lot higher now than before okay so like i what think you, I, 
asked you like what do you think the average age of marriage was and you were like oh about late 20s maybe um but it's actually like mid to late 30s wow. now so people are really delaying marriage until after and i think that's because you know in the 1960s people were very much focused like i you know go to school then i get married yeah start my family have children grow up with the children and you know a young while i rear my children mm -hmm. um sorry it sounds like sheep rearing doesn't it my father's <laughs> an actual shepherd it's in my vocabulary <laughs> um but now it's people just i think a lot of people are not seeing good examples of marriage and are fearful of marriage because nothing destroys you more than joining with someone who isn't working with you and you're fighting daily a marriage when it's not centered on god when it's not you know centered on his principles and when two people are not fully committed and are fighting each other can't is hell on earth absolutely yeah. but marriage where you know no marriage is perfect no person's perfect no no but you know as you could attest to this that when it's two people that are actually are striving towards growing their relationship with god and each other yep. it's beautiful yes not perfect but beautiful no and, yeah and i'd say a reflection of heaven on earth yeah. We fear hell. Say that again. We fear hell. And, you know, as a generation, I think fearing divorce because divorce, um, I know Dr. Miles Monroe speaks on this. It's literally a separation from that covenant relationship. Yes. And also a separation of hopes, dreams, separation of promises. And then with divorce, like, Miles, Dr. Miles Monroe speaks on this is, um, you know, when they die, you bring them to the grave. Mm. But when you get divorced, that person keeps resurrecting Ooh. and keeps resurrecting. And that's like a continuation of hell on earth yeah. in some cases. And it's that, that brokenness that people just are afraid of. And I totally understand it. I totally get it. And then, you know, some people genuinely, genuinely want to be married and then marriage after that, it's sometimes just really hard to promise again or just to commit again with circumstances mm -hmm. they've been through, especially marrying so much later. They've had more experiences to then kind of deal with. It's, I think it's hard. It must be. It must be. Wow. So the statistics that you're uh, working on, is it both for men and women? Is it the same? Um, in terms of the age? Yes. So for in, this is 2018 UK government statistics, and they said the, the average age for women to marry um, was 36, and the average age for men was 38. Okay, so it's not, okay. not much it's different, not much but different. it's a lot higher than my parents, for example. <laughs> it was like late 20s sorry late um teens early 20s oh wow and then like i know in my culture the turkish culture it's like you're in your mid-20s like you're at home now <laughs> <laughs> you know you're not married like what's going on yeah. and then also being from migrant families there tends to be more of an emphasis on marriage and then just dealing with that as well and then the, the family yeah. and then coming at you like your age i was married with three children mm -hmm. i was like good for you <laughs> yes you know because uh, let's talk about that because i think also parents put their kids on their own with their children under a lot of pressure even society i mm -hmm. mean where i come from um nigeria <laughs> oh my goodness the pressure for people to get married a lot of times the men don't respect you mm. if you're not married mm. um that your parents are constantly telling you, get married, you need to get married. Mm -hmm. And I've even heard of instances where the girl has decided, okay, she's engaged, they're going to get married, fix the date. But then she's found out that this is not the person she wants to get married to. But the mm -hmm. parents have said, you cannot disgrace us. You have to get married to him. And it's just terrible. 
It is. It's so much added pressure. And it's this whole kind of connotation that if you're, so me, for example, 35, not yet married, never been married. Yeah. There's something wrong with her. There's definitely something wrong with her. What's wrong with her as to why she's not married? Could it just be that life circumstances weren't the same as other people? Could it just be that I actually value myself enough to not be joined to anyone? Ooh, I love that. <laughs> I actually value myself, know my worth and value to know that, you know, I, so I've got this commitment to myself. I would rather be happily single mm -hmm. than joined together with the wrong person. Good one. And unless there's someone who is, you know, of a similar mindset. Yeah. And that could be so broad, but similar mindset to me, um, not the same because I don't want another goes in. <laughs> <laughs> I I need like I like people to challenge my thinking. Like okay. I really welcome that and invite that. But a similar kind of mindset, you know, someone who's quite goal driven as I am, someone who wants to make a positive contribution to the world around them. That's yeah. important for me. Yeah. So unless I'm joining with someone like that, like I can do all those things on my own. Mm. Jesus wasn't a single adult. Yeah. yeah. He accomplished so much. Imagine him being married, right? And he's, you know, his burden is now shared. Sorry, he's now focus is divided between god and his wife mm -hmm. and unless his wife's on the same page as god <laughs> he's gonna be torn yeah 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 but that was never his mission anyway so no. yeah. <laughs> but with us like unless my husband's on the same page with what god has for me mm -hmm. not what i have for me what god has for me yeah then i'm gonna be torn and divided and i'm done with living a life in division in conflict with myself like so i was talking to someone last night and i was they were just like so you know you're a relationship coach but you're not got a relationship with your own how's that going and i'm like but but my relationship with god and my relationship with myself has never been better like i can genuinely come to a place where i really like who i am there were times in my life where i didn't and I like who I am. I'm confident and happy with the person I've become and becoming. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm but good. When you, when you look back now, you I guess you can almost say, thank God that I didn't marry when I was younger because you probably will be divorced by now. Quite possibly, or just being in a difficult relationship where they and what God has for me are not aligned. Yeah. Like, I would have been in conflict. It would have been hell in some stages um and then also i was listening to an audible book and it's like you look around at your friends who lived that ideal life got married young and kids yeah, yeah. my life would look like those and the way i see it from the outside is you know how much of their purpose are they living Whereas my life is all about purpose, online, you know, helping with the youth, being that youth mentor that I wish I had at a young age. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm living to impact and help people's lives. I couldn't do that if I was married with my own kids right now. Sure, sure. So I'm taking the blessings of this season, doing as much as I can, trusting God that when my season comes, that I'm able to focus on my family more because I've already been pouring out before. I love that. I absolutely love that. And it's a mindset. And we, you know. Mindset. You need to change your mindset. I think that's yeah. what you said. You said singleness is a state of mind mm -hmm. as opposed to a relationship status. <laughs> So I'll speak to that a little bit. So um, my project, the counselling project I did, um, I also shared that singleness isn't just people that are unmarried. Mm -hmm. We need to be single because the definition of single is an individual. Yeah. Yeah. People, the prerequisite for marriage in coming together is two individuals. That right? Come together is one. That yeah. come together. So you've got one and one. They yeah. come together in marriage. Yeah. But what 
I've experienced in the past from my own experiences, but what a lot of people do in marriage is they lose their identity when and they're no longer an individual. Yeah. They're no longer a single person mm -hmm. and their lives get way too meshed with the other person and they lose their purpose. They lose their focus. Mm -hmm. They lose who God created them to be individually mm -hmm. because their identity is now wife. Their identity is now mother. Ooh. It's not, it's not yeah. it's not yeah. the, the person in and of themselves yes you're married but you're way more than just married you're a child of god first and foremost yeah. you're an individual first and foremost so like my mindset is even when married i'm still going to be a single individual person living my life alongside my husband who's living his life yeah. and we're gonna join together merge together in one mm. to glorify god do you know, based on what you just said, now I think a lot of it, especially for Christians, is the it's the wrong teaching. Mm -hmm. I think that's the problem. That's a challenge we have, because I think people have thought, oh, once you marry, the two mm -hmm. of you become one, which is true, but mm -hmm. it doesn't say that you lose your identity, right? As Gazette or as Olu. Mm. That's I think that's the challenge we have. Mm. With what you just said. Yeah. Right. And I think we need more practical teaching in the church. Oh, yes, definitely we do. And then, and then even when married, as you know, like, um, how many years have you been married? 30. So God be <laughs> me. I love it. I love it. Um, but as you know, the stages of marriage change. And oh, yes. <laughs> identify and reconnect with who you are in that season. Right? Yeah. So I know my parents, they went through retirement not that long ago. They took out early retirement. And it's like now, I don't have to work. Who am I? Mm. <laughs> Where's my identity? It's this new recoming of, you know, re kind of going to God and just being like, yes, God, I'm an individual. But um, what's my identity for this particular season of my life? What's my purpose for this season of my life? Um, what do you want me to do in terms of contributing, being a blessing to those, me and those around me in this season of my life? So, yeah, singleness is definitely something we need to remain single, yeah. but join together with yeah. Men yeah. for marriage, for, you know, that, that safe place to be 100% completely vulnerable with another individual here on earth. Mm -hmm. That's what... Um, marriage is about and it's about relating to other people it's about being you know fully committed to another person fully flawed yes. fully loved fully <laughs> accepted fully um committed yeah you know i think that we in fact i was listening to um td jakes the other day and he said something that I wrote down. He said, sometimes we marry because we want affirmation. So we assign to our spouses the job of affirmation. <laughs> but if you know who you are, you know your worth, you should do that. And when I thought that, I thought, that is so true. You know, he said, you're constantly wanting the guy to say, oh, I love you. Oh, you're beautiful. Of course, your husband will say that. But he doesn't have to say it all every single day. And then when he doesn't, you now feel who doesn't love me. If he loves me, mm. he'll be saying how beautiful I am every day. Mm. You know, but if you don't, like you said, you come into the marriage whole, mm. not. <laughs> In fact, I was just thinking now, you don't want to go into the marriage bleeding on another person. Mm. That's, that's really good. Because that's what a lot of people do. They, they bleed and then that person's now paying the price for a previous relationship. And it's not fair. No. It's not right. Mm -hmm. So in that, we need to at least start the healing, start the just getting to know who we are, being authentically ourselves. I think there's also this idea that, you know, I'm whole, I'm perfect, you know, I'm all done. It, no, no, no. I think there's always stages to healing. Yeah. And there's always certain experiences we have that are going to trigger certain areas that we need to go back. Yes. Oh, and I think... Uh, with singles and with my own journey too it's as seasons have happened I've had to kind of reheal. 
or just do another layer. So one that happened not that long ago, a couple of years ago, was my grandfather died. Mm -hmm. And I'd had people close to me die before, as in my grandparents, but they lived abroad. And it wasn't as, I, I was so upset. But it wasn't as impactful because I didn't see them daily. Right. Whereas when my grandfather died, that lives like five minutes from my house here, and we saw him at least once, twice a week, okay. it really shook the ground beneath me. And, you know, they, and then that then flagged up more emotional hurt and pain. And it's, you know, it's, we're human. We're going to feel emotions. We're going to feel that hurt. Yeah. But it's giving ourselves the space to sit in it and with it. Not, you know, just sit with it. Like we said earlier, there's reasons we're feeling these emotions. Yeah. Um, and then my mindset just kept shifting. And it's like, I was so blessed to have him as a granddad. He was so sweet. He was so lovely. He was so, you know, brought so much joy into our lives. Um, and then it's, again, that mindset shift that just needs to keep shifting. And, you know, certain things are going to happen. Maybe, you know, when I'm married... My husband might do or say something that someone previously said and really upset me, but now I then have a new opportunity to deal with it in a better way. Right. And I have an opportunity to actually be like, you know what, what you did there upset me because I've been through this before. Mm. And um, it's given me an opportunity to be more vulnerable with myself. Right. And when we're vulnerable, we grow and we grow closer together we grow more intimate we we are able to relate to other people because by me sitting here and being vulnerable about my experiences it's giving every single person listening the opportunity to be vulnerable with theirs yeah or acknowledge theirs so i think we need to learn to be more vulnerable we need to learn to be to share more of our experiences yeah. our challenges because the chances are we're not the only ones going through it no yeah. We don't, like I say to my mentees, I don't always experience what they've experienced, but look, chances are I've been through the emotions they're going through. True. Own way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh, this has been so amazing. But you know what? Um, I think it's a lot of work. We need to do a lot of work with ourselves. Yeah. Um, therapy, as you mentioned, is one step mm. because we come. We both, especially going into a relationship. We come with baggages mm. and we come with expectations. Um, I, I'll tell you what, when I got married, I expected my, fad, uh, my husband to be like my dad. Yeah. But he's not my dad. So I kept comparing him with my dad. Oh, my dad used to do this. My dad used to do that. Mm. But I had to learn over the years that, no, he's not. So, mm. <laughs> you know, deal with yourself. He's a separate individual. Well, we come with so many baggages, really, mm. we really, we, and we need to deal with that before we go into marriages. Mm. But I want us to talk about, because I think it's so important, whether you're a single person or you're married, because you might be in a relationship, or you might be married, but we still ha don't understand our worth, the mm. worth in Christ. Can you speak mm. into that? Because I think it's so important for people to understand the value, how much God values them, mm. how much they have. So can you speak into that? And this speaks into, you know, affirming yourself as well, as you mentioned before. So with Wife in the Waiting Academy, um, I share that it's to learn your worth and value. Okay. Um, you know, we're so valuable. We hear things like Jesus died on the cross for us. Like he died for us. And even if we were the only individual on the earth, he would still die for us because he values us that much. Um to free us from the burden of sin. That, that's what he did. So <clears throat> I believe that every single person, whether they know Jesus, whether they know God or not, are made with purpose, on purpose, for purpose. And they're made with love. Can you repeat that again? Every single person, yes, yeah. repeat that again. Every single person yeah. is made on purpose, okay. with purpose, okay. for purpose. Okay. Um, you know, however they were conceived, in or out of wedlock, um, however they came to this earth, they are an absolute blessing, and God wanted them yep. here. Yeah, they were always meant to be here. Yep. So I think one of our downfalls is not knowing that, not acknowledging it, and then choosing not to do anything about it. 
when we do um we need to know how valuable we are as people like we have the opportunity to impact those around us i i used to go into a room and was like oh this energy is really tough and da 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 whereas now when i step into the room jesus steps into the room too and God, you know god's inside of me so i there are certain people that people close to me they're like oh no i can't be around them and i'm like actually whenever i'm around them they never bring up those negative conversations mm. why because i can i can steer the conversation i am the change agent in the room because i know my power and worth comes from jesus mm. his presence is in me if the living god lives inside of me yes i get to be that change agent in the room i get to guide certain conversations i get to like, like what you do you're guiding this conversation because you want it to glorify god in all that we do so we get to be those change agents so i can either acknowledge that and be that change agent mm -hmm. or i could dismiss it and be like oh, well i can't do anything i can't change them no you can't change a person no. but you can change that conversation yes. or if it's not honoring you know you or whatever you can choose to step out of the room you don't have to be in the room mm -hmm. so that's because i know my worth and value it's because i have boundaries that i live by it's because i have values and those core values come from the word of god like one of my core values is respect yeah. so many people are like why do you call me sir why do you call me miss are you not a sir or miss like i do this to my to my students that are way younger than me mm -hmm. you're right sir how are you doing young man mm -hmm it's respect yes. because that's my core value yes. and whether other people uh, respect me or not i'm still going to respect them because what i do is a reflection of me wow. right so but i know this because i know my worth and value comes from god i know that he he intended for us to be here um i used to be told when i was younger that my brother and sister were planned but i was the mistake so I was the one that just wasn't planned. I brought up in a very loving family, but I was the unplanned child. So, you know, they'll joke around with me and be like, you're the mistake. Mm. Until I learned, but God don't make mistakes. No, no. He don't make mistakes. He doesn't. And, he doesn't. You know, I, what oftentimes what people do is they, they go off of what other people value them at. Yeah. Um, they go off of what well, other I'm people... Sorry to stop you, um, to interrupt. I'm so sorry, but... You know what you just said because that i don't know if that affected you as a child growing up knowing that you were not planned because that will affect a lot of people yeah and that would damage their um self-esteem and well yeah it does it's like well you're not wanted mm. the others were like really wanted because they'll plan but you're not really wanted you were just like eh. and then i wasn't a boy as well and you know like in these ethnic minority cultures if you're not a boy the first one was a girl but the second one they were kind of wanting me to be a boy okay. that too but god don't make mistakes no, and in all fairness the impact that i'm making in the world is phenomenal and that's all him it's not like it's all god and when you know how valuable you are you then <laughs> you know you pay i was a private tutor still am i've got my own tutoring company um and I used to charge like 10, 15 pounds an hour until I learnt my value and put my prices <laughs> up. And they gradually went up. And it's like, you know, you set your price and you add tax. Yes. yes. When you know your worth and value. Yes. And when I'm now coming to a relationship, I know my worth and value. I know what I'm bringing to the table for my marriage. I could say, you know, I'm an encourager. Mm -hmm. I'm this, I'm that. I've done this. You know, I earn this much money. I... Um, I'm driven in this way. These are the goals I want to see. This is what I want to accomplish in this lifetime. And if the other person isn't valuing themselves, doesn't know their worth and value, mm -hmm. and, you know, just comes and is like, yeah, well, I just want to be married. <laughs> We're not really aligned, are we? <laughs> it's not really going to work, is it? <laughs> so we need to know our value and then also when someone tries to come and devalue us mm -hmm. yes 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 we have our boundaries yes i've had people say oh well um i could never date you because you believe you believe that sex should be within marriage 
And I'm like, yes, I do. And <laughs> a Christian as well. This person's a Christian saying this to me. Well, and then, I'm not surprised, yeah. I'm not surprised. And then I'm just like, yeah, I do. Like, I genuinely believe that sex should be within the confinements of marriage and the protection and commitment. Um, and they're like, yeah, I could never date you. And I'm like, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, whittle out yourselves. It's fine. No problem. <laughs> because I know my value and I'm not going to undervalue myself for nothing and no one. Yes. Don't settle for less. Mm -mm. Let me do that. Wow. But a lot of people do uh, settle. Sorry, say that again. A lot of people do settle. And it's yeah. sad. It, it's sad when we settle. Um, the other day, oh my God, I, so, I think somebody sent it to me. They had, it was a video and it had this, a group of girls and boys, uh, guys, and they were talking about um, the girls were arguing for, they can never marry anyone who earns less than they. Mm. And the guys were saying, it doesn't matter. It depends mm. on, you know, and the argument got quite heated, but what grieved my spirit was the language the girls was using and um there was they said something like i, I don't know if even i could if i can use the word online but i just thought personally i don't think there's anything wrong if a guy is earning less than you at a particular point in time you know because mm -hmm. circumstances change today mm -hmm. he might be earning less than you but i think the most important thing is what you said the values do you guys have the same mm -hmm. values are you working um are you on the same page, you know, in a lot of ways? But what, you, so for you personally, mm. um, based on what I just said, mm -hmm. does it matter if the guy is earning less than you? Um, I could share an experience. I started dating a guy who was waiting tables when we met. Um, and I was a mental health lawyer. I was going to tribunals, you know, representing clients and whatnot. So it looked like I was earning more. <laughs> Um, but that didn't matter to me because I looked at his mindset. I didn't look at where he was. I was looking at where he wanted to go, but also the steps that he's taking to get there. That's it. Yeah. It weren't just like, yeah, yeah, I want to earn like a hundred grand a year. Yeah. Good for you. Like how, how, how are you planning to do that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You plan to do it. So where are you on your plan? Like, it's more about the mindset. So we started dating, he was waiting tables. When we stopped dating, he was like an executive director in his company. Okay. Like, because the mindset was there. Yeah. And also, he was connected to me. So, of course, he's going to, like, just say it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I we, love that. We have courages. <laughs> like, I always used to say, it's probably a wrong affirmation back then, but I always used to say, my boyfriend's rich. <laughs> my boyfriend, I should say my husband's rich, but anyway, that, that's coming too. <laughs> but when he's connected with someone that's an encourager, that's lifting them up, and I think us women really get the power to lift a man up or really push him down. Yes. It's the words that we speak, because men are very much, um, you know, they really respond to affirmation. Yes. Like my nephew, if I was to be like, pick that up now, he'd be like, no. Whereas if I was to say, you're such a good boy. You always listen. I love the way you tidy up your toys. You'd be like, yeah, look, look. <laughs> hey, but it's the same with men. It's like, husband, you know, I'm not going to be like, I'll put the trash cans out or whatever. I'd be like, I, thank you so much for doing that. I really, I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, not the... Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Are you back on? Um, not that we have to say that, but we really can tear a man down through the words that we speak. Okay. And we yeah. need to learn that too. So yeah, it's less about the where they're at right now, where they're heading. Um, but also, I do need to say this, what stage in their life are they at? Like, um, you know, where a guy might be in their early 20s compared to where they'll be in their early 30s, early 40s, early 50s different yeah will be very different like for me for example i'm in my mid-30s you know looking for a guy i'll be like okay so what accomplishments have you made yes. or have you made anything and lost it or you know like 
tell me more about your experience or journey if they're like yeah like nothing no savings no you know planning for the future then I'm going to think some other way. And it's not because of how much they're earning. It's because yeah. of the lack of planning or lack of purpose, intention with what they're doing in their time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the mindset again. It's like you can argue their earnings, but you win it context. It's like taking out a scripture without reading the context mm. around. Mm. Yeah. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's about yeah. the mindset. Yeah. Great. Right. Okay, guys. Do you guys have any questions for Guzan? Please put it in the comment box, in the question box. Any questions? I'm sure she wouldn't mind answering the questions. Anything to do with waiting? Yeah. Anything? You are sound. Thank you. Thank you, Lillian. <laughs> <laughs> no, she is. She, she definitely is. Um, yeah. Okay. So, one other thing I was thinking of. Do you, okay, do you, <laughs> what do you think about using dating apps? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I kind of think it goes back to our analogy. It's like, um, I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs, trusting God for my husband and just sitting here twiddling my thumbs, waiting for the Amazon delivery guy. You know, God's going to send him out of heaven. It's going to be this thing where like the heavens open and he's going to be like, this is your husband not it's no. not not gonna be that so we need to be intentional and um yeah i i'm all for dating apps i think they're a great time with the season we're in to meet people yeah. um so i've got this concept and this is quite a fresh concept i haven't really shared much on it so you get an exclusive um, so I used to date for marriage. I used to date in lines with, you know, I'm tall, five foot 11. Okay. But if he's like five foot five, we're not even gonna go on a date. Like, I'm just being honest. Or even like, yeah, just, you need to be my height or above. Like, just saying. Okay. Um, so before it very much used to be like that. It used to be, you know, he had to be a man of God. He had to be serving. He had to be this, he had to be that. Whereas, that added so much pressure to meeting people because I'm now going there with my expectations. I'm going there with my checklist. I'm going there and I'm so kind of like concerned about matching these that I'm not being myself and the other person opposite me is feeling like they're being interviewed. Yeah. They're not being themselves. And I just think that was a terrible, terrible mindset to have going into dating. Yeah. So my thought now is you date to date and you date for fun and it ain't the fun the world knows in like being sexually promiscuous no <laughs> that's not the fun we're talking about um it's not the fun you know going out getting wasted whatever else the world does no it's dating to meet people mm -hmm. dating to be intrigued about another individual dating to practice the art of conversation yeah how about that dating to be vulnerable yeah and i don't mean going and sharing your whole life story i mean being vulnerable enough to ask questions being vulnerable enough to answer questions like we're doing here in this conversation yeah um yeah. so i date to meet people i date to learn more of what i like and what i don't like mm -hmm. i might think that i really want a guy who is so certain on what he wants and you know he is very goal orientated vision focused but then meet a guy that's like that and be like he's not even open to hearing my opinion i don't want that okay. yeah. yeah or i might be like oh you know i want this characteristic but then completely miss another characteristic i really oh, yeah. need yeah and so yeah date to have fun date to be open date to really practice being your authentic self um date to relate to other people um and yeah i so i'm all for dating apps there needs to be very clear boundaries with them with their use very clear boundaries and i would say you really need to know who, yourself before you go on them because if you're easily influenced or swayed by what a man says about you um you know by all the flattery mm -hmm. 
I don't think it's um it's a thing. Oh, one of my really good friends date on purpose date with purpose and purpose. purpose. Yes, absolutely. Um there there needs to be purpose to it. And I think where I'm at, my purpose is to really learn of myself, to really interact with other people and um yeah, to just meet and, and you never know, like one person I've met, I think we could actually go into business together. As opposed to, you know, I don't think a romantic uh, relationship is with them, but just, you know, other opportunities can arise. Yeah. Uh, another one, I actually learned of a, a network which I really want to join and partake in. So, again, it's like networking, yeah. meeting people and having fun. I, I, I really love that. Because mm. when you date and you have marriage on your mind, it's a lot of pressure because you're constantly, oh no, he hasn't fit, he doesn't fit this criteria. He's not right. tall, he's not this. So I really, really love that. Yeah. Well, and I, I think a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people have said they love it. Yeah, dating yeah. to date, not necessary for marriage. Yeah, having a, the conversations. Just yeah. get to know them, get to know the person as a friend mm. first. That's absolutely it. and i think what people are very quick to do is date exclusively too or be so quick to jump into a romantic relationship mm. which adds its own pressure and you yes. don't really know them and you're now in a romantic relationship with them where there may be more expectations or whatever else it, yeah slow it down let's be friends let's you can date friends. people yeah date people just to know people you don't have to get exclusive so quickly um dating to be a fully rounded person absolutely yeah. yeah don't date exclusively pace yourself yes so but you know back in the day usually there was like oh well there's like three people i could possibly have a relationship with and then you get to choose and you get to kind of be like actually of all of them it's this person i like more yeah and then also compa compar comparing, you know, your experiences and how you feel around the other people, not that you're comparing the people, you know, you get to kind of know more about yourself in the process. It's brilliant. I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> no, that's good. No, no, seriously, that's good. That's really good. Wow. Okay. You shared so much with us. Any last thing, any last thing for us, for our audience, living whilst waiting yes so, the waiting can be difficult if your eyes are on you if your eyes are on what you really want so my tip would be to make it really clear what you want you know ask for what you want and then give god the eraser to erase whatever he needs to add whatever he needs to in the process mm -hmm continually go to god for those strategies that he wants you to use in the way right. and you know find your purpose know your purpose live life on purpose um know your purpose, know your purpose live life on purpose yeah yeah and just learn to be authentically you because i believe when you're authentically you you will attract the right mate for you like I think there's nothing more attractive than someone walking confidently in who they were created to be whether they're a carpenter whether they're you know someone that works in a grocery store whether they're a businessman whatever there's nothing more attractive than someone walking confidently in who they know they were created to do so do that your your mate will be attracted to you you won't have to go find him yeah yeah, yeah. And the other thing she said at the beginning, she said, have fun, go out, do stuff. Don't just sit at home and expect the man to just, uh, what, did, what was that thing you said about the Amazon, um, <laughs> Amazon <laughs> delivery guy? Yeah, so like, it's like waiting for the Amazon delivery guy, but they don't even wait around now. They leave the package on the doorstep and leg it. So you don't even meet them. Get out there, go have fun. Now, now the weather's getting better. Yeah. Go to the park, go to regular places, go to the coffee shop, go to town, you know, go to the beach, wherever. Just have do fun. stuff with your girlfriends or even your um, boyfriend, I mean, guy friends. Just do yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. Live life. Live life. Yes. Don't put your life on hold while no. you're waiting. And that's just for being a single person. Anything you're doing, don't put your life on hold. That's right. Life is to be lived. Yeah. And I posted that yesterday. It's um, don't 
count the days, make the days count. Ah, oh, I love that. Don't make count the, day the days, make the days count. Yes. Yes, yes, please, please, I love that. Wow. Thank you so much. Yes, find yourself first, live Absolutely. life. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. Life is for living, it is, it is. And don't be afraid to be with you. Yes, that's another thing. I guess we, we talked, touched on that, about the loneliness, people not yeah. wanting to be with themselves. Well, you have to. You have to enjoy being with yourself because even when you get married, there are times when the man won't be around. Great. You have to enjoy your own company. Seriously. You be comfortable with <laughs> who you are. Sorry? Be comfortable with who you be are. Be comfortable with you, yes. Do you know I get, oh, I have to tell you this. A lot of times when my husband travels and then people say, oh, are you missing him? The first time I said to someone, I said, not really. Said, How can you not miss? I said, but I'm, because I'm enjoying my company. I love being with myself. Yes, mm. I miss him, but not, no. A girl wants to have time to have yes. time to. But a lot of people think, God, why are you not missing him? No, I enjoy my own company. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean I don't love mm. him or anything. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. It takes a very confident person to say that, and that speaks to you being fully comfortable with your own thoughts mm -hmm. a lot of people are not i know i wasn't comfortable with my thoughts and i would travel i'd run away <laughs> and think that my problem was at home the problem weren't at home it was in my own mind and i couldn't escape my mind until i confronted my mind yes. and now it's all about i'm really just okay with my own thoughts now and when your thoughts line up with god's thoughts oof, you're good you're good oh, you're fine sitting because th th that's you and god time that's you and daddy time yes, yes. and we we need daddy time yes i love that be comfortable with your thoughts really and a person yeah. doesn't like time on their own isn't comfortable with their own thoughts no 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 yeah Oof, that's gosh. beautiful thank you it's has been, been beautiful because <laughs> it has been really beautiful yeah. You're definitely someone I would love to have back again because you've got so much depth, really. Honestly, I love it. Love it. Love I love it. it. I love <laughs> it. I love just helping people find find what they're looking for. And the the crazy thing is, we often look outside to find it all, but it's really all inside us mm -hmm. already. These powers already inside us. And we need to go inwards. We need to go, you know, pick out the thoughts that aren't serving us. Pick out the thoughts that are not serving us. Yes. Yes. And then just, you know, reprogram it. It's like something's not working on the computer. We just reprogram it, reboost it. Um, yeah. Fact, you know that scripture that says, take captive every thought, every we... negative thought that's not serving you. Just... There we go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Brilliant. What's the um, name of your academy again, in case anybody wants to, what's it called? Can you type it in? Um, yes, I'll type it in. So uh, if anyone wants to follow the work I do, it's Lady Goes In, but also Wife in the Waiting Academy. So I will, that's Wife in the Waiting Academy. And then obviously the page that I'm also on now. So um, the course hopefully will be relaunching at the end of the year. And it will be like a, a mentoring program with videos and really practical steps in how to walk within um, life waiting for God des while desiring marriage. Say that again one more time so that you can get that. <laughs> so Wife in the Waiting Academy is all about, so my, my, my I'm going to say in a clearer way, when you live a life on purpose, yeah. um, you will then know um, who to align with. So it's all about living life on purpose, with purpose. It's all about knowing your worth and value, working through the healing, and yeah, just really trusting God for your mate. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Me, it's been a privilege. It's oh, <laughs> seriously, I've been blessed. And I'm not single, but I've been blessed. There's so many things you've said that I'm actually going to um, listen to this again and yeah. um, 
yeah, share with other people and take a moment to for myself. So it's been brilliant. Can we show her some love and appreciation? She shared so many, many, many nuggets. It's been brilliant. Mm -hmm. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Please follow her at Lady Gozan and also follow her Academy Wife in the Waiting. She's brilliant. And she's been, she's not just speaking from, she's speaking from experience. Everything that mm -hmm. she said she's been through. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah. So will, will this be on Hangout Cafe? We can share it'll, it? Yes, it'll be. I'm going to put it on uh, YouTube. Perfect. And then I'll forward it to you. Please well, do. I'll, I'll, just put, I'll put extracts on, on um, Hangout Cafe, but I'll put it on YouTube. <laughs> Perfect. So you share it with others. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, folks, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been absolutely brilliant. Lady Gazan has been absolutely amazing. And um, thank you again for joining us. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.